All right. I'm glad the microphone's working. So my name is Murray McCarley. I'm a part of the co-founding team from this company, Matter, based out of Austin, Texas. We're a small startup. But before that, I used to be one of those uh, corporate IT sales exec smarmy bastard guys. And uh, one of the things that I learned very early on in the sort of sales learning process is when you're first stepping into the office of a prospective new customer and meeting them for the first time, one of the things that they really train you to do is kind of look around the office and see if there's pictures of a family shot on that person's desk or a sports team that they like or if they've got a super clean, well-organized desk just look for some clues about the kind of person that it is you're about to engage with and kind of you know, become a chameleon and adjust your, uh, your, your, your talking points and maybe the way you behave accordingly to how you think that, that person's going to react well to you, right? So that's how like, the corporate IT execs kind of behave. And what we're trying to say is, you know, there's a way that you can metaphorically look around the office of your customers by seeing how they behave on social media and get an understanding of the type of people that you're engaging with or you're hoping to engage with. And maybe you can adjust your communications plans. Maybe you can, you can adjust your product plans. Maybe you can somehow adjust the way that you approach these people um, to fit their, their personality type. So let's have a little look at, look at that. So you know, if you think about it, it's really impossible to throw people into groups based on demographics or shared interests or stuff like that and expect them all to behave the same and react to the same to the same stimuli. It just doesn't work out that way because there's something that separates us all. You know, we all have these individual characteristics that we call uh, personality. You, know, you see it in action all the time. You see it when your friends react differently to a situation than you do. Some people laugh at the joke. Some people don't. Some people think this is a problem, some people don't. Some people like this product, some people don't. Everybody's reacting differently because of their, their personality. You feel it when you're introduced to someone new, right? You go to the cocktail party, you chat to someone new. If they're asking some nice, interesting questions, you have a lovely, easy conversation, you feel good about it. If they're interrupting you and talking over you and talking loudly, you, sort of, you may feel bad about that or you may be the kind of person that loves to engage in that. Right? We all have different ways of interacting with different people in different situations, and it's pretty much all governed by your personality. So personality makes a difference in you know, the, the, the marketing space between the people who are going to be super loyal about your brand. You know, Once they've discovered it and found out that they like it, it'll be hard to make them think about doing something else. But on the other hand, you know, there's people out there that really have a thirst to go and find something new. They like to discover the next best thing and they're always eager to try the new shiny super duper thing that may be offered by your competitors, right? Um, you may think about how your edgy communication plan is going to turn some people in your audience right on, but it's also going to turn some people off. You know, so knowing the types of personalities that you're trying to appeal to is definitely going to help your um, your communications and your product development plans, but it's sort of hard to establish what that personality component is in your audience unless you use lengthy questionnaires and lengthy surveys and expensive interpretation of those results. And it might all seem a little bit mysterious, but luckily there's a bit of science um, behind it which can help us out. So if you asked a psychologist uh, to define personality, the kind of things that they might tell you are that the, you know, the, the key words are emotional, attitudinal, behavioral responses. You combine those things, and that gives you an idea about somebody's personality. But that's pretty hard to measure those kinds of things. And over time, there's been different models about how to try and understand personality and how to measure the various components of personality. Um, and the one that seems to be pretty widely accepted now is the so-called big five or five-factor model of personality. It's a construct, basically defines five dimensions of personality that we all share to a greater or lesser extent because we are all different in the end. And it's fairly simple to understand, so simple that even you know, guys like me can sort of describe it semi-intelligently. It applies across cultures, 
so there's no issues with uh, you know, different cultural interpretations and so on. And the other big benefit of it was it seemed like we would be able to take it on and model it algorithmically, so that's what we, we tried and did. So let's break it down and look at the big five personality traits. So they're pretty simple, you know, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Now, of course, you know, there's variations on how you behave in different situations over time, but, you know, over a period of time, your natural tendencies do emerge and your natural tendencies do dominate how you're going to behave uh, in given situations based on those personality traits. So we're going to go through them one by one, so just have a think about, you know, as we're going through them, where you might lie on the, the various continuum. So first up is openness. So at one end of the continuum, you've got people who are super inventive, super curious, they're looking for something new. At the other end of the continuum, people who are much more consistent and cautious, they're steady, chips, you know, they pretty kind of difficult to make them change course. So the factor that we're describing here really is the extent to which somebody's imaginative and independent, and it can help you know, estimate how much somebody values variety versus routine. So from a marketing standpoint, it's pretty easy to see that if you've got people at you know, one end or the other end of this continuum, you would message them completely differently. You might even push different products towards them, depending on that personality type. Next up is conscientiousness. So at one end, people that are super efficient, super organized. At the other end, people that are a bit more easygoing, a bit more relaxed about things, maybe even appear careless about things. So what we're talking about here is the tendency to fulfill obligations, carry out duties, check every box on the list. Um, so think about people's planned behavior versus spontaneous behavior. So if you're marketing um, you know, uh, tours or something like that, you might think about those people that love to plan their vacation way in advance versus those people that just throw their hands in the air and say, let's go to Paris for the weekend, right? It's just a different sort of approach to how people behave. Extroversion, at one end of the spectrum, outgoing, energetic people, your classic extrovert. At the other end, people who are more solitary, more reserved, perhaps appear more thoughtful, you know, your classic sort of introvert. So this is really talking about sociability, you know, the degree to which people look for stimulation from the other people that are around them. And again, as a marketer, you know, it's pretty easy to understand why you know, certain types of messaging appeal to one end of the spectrum but not the other and, and vice versa. Fourth characteristic, or the fourth trait, I should more accurately say, is agreeableness. So at one end of the spectrum, people that are very friendly, compassionate, easy to get along with. The other end of the spectrum, people who are perhaps more analytical, perhaps more detached, perhaps more rely on data to help them make decisions. So this is really determining um, how people are likely to cooperate in situations versus people who are perhaps more suspicious of other people's motivations and prefer to look to data to help them drive an answer. So again, continuing your marketing theme, you might think about how the, the tour operator is going to uh, message those two people. And then the fifth and last um, personality trait that we can talk about is neuroticism. So at one end, people that are very sensitive and nervous and worry about lots of things. At the other end, people who are much more secure, much more confident in their approach and perhaps let stuff just wash over them and don't worry too much about it. So what we're really talking about here is the tendency for people to experience negative emotions like anger or anxiety and so on. We're talking about emotional stability amongst people. So that's all pretty interesting background stuff, Murray, but can marketers really leverage that? The reality is that you know, lots of people already are perhaps looking for some specific personality characteristics, but you're using lots of tests, lots of questionnaires to determine how that goes. So I think there might be an easier way to understand those personalities by looking at what people are just naturally talking about and looking at how they naturally talk about things and their communication style and so on, which gives you a nice easy way to understand um, what they're all about. And social media, of course, is that enormous pool of data that we can use to analyze people's communication styles. And that communication style is really the key to understanding what their personality type is. You know, think back to the meeting that person at the cocktail party. The only thing you've really got to go on 
uh, to decide whether you're going to like them and continue the conversation is their communication style, how they approach you or how you approach them, how they question you, how they react to the questions that you answer, uh, that you ask. Those are the things, that communication style is the key to the, the personality that you interpret them as having and make you decide. Then there's really easy ways to understand how communication style can correlate to those personality traits. A couple of examples would be for high openness, you know, you look for people that really have a very rich and varied vocabulary. You know, they express lots of imaginative thoughts. They express new ideas. High conscientiousness people talk about preparations. They talk about details. They talk about schedules. They talk about dates in the future, stuff like that. So there's lots of different ways and lots of different ways of looking at people's words that they use and how they use them and the context that they use them in to help us make these determinations about the communication style and thus their personality. So you can see how that works at an individual level. So once you start looking at your audience and you combine this aspect of personality along with the aspect of demographics which may be declared by the people themselves in their social media profiles or they may be derived by some interpretative algorithms making determinations about uh, demographics and then add on that layer of the interests that they have and the influences that they clearly are sub subject to, you start to build up quite a nice picture of what those people are like. So if you have the permission and the right level of access to social media profiles, it becomes possible to make you know, a very nice uh, rounded picture of what your audience might look like. So let's consider that how uh, you know, we're actually doing that. So once you've got this uh, idea in your head that you want to leverage personality, it starts to become possible to look at specific groups and then start studying their behavior. So setting up the screen for a group is pretty easy, it's straightforward. In our version of a web-based application, you might be interested in a, a group like, I want um, females who are in a certain age group and have very outgoing uh, personality types because I want to market something to them that, that appeals to that. So our uh, algorithms will go off and look at a specific audience, maybe that's your audience or your competitor's audience or some aggregate audience of people that are interested in a particular topic or maybe it's Twitter as a whole, it doesn't really matter. But the app's going to go and find all those uh, people that sort of match that criteria and then come back and tell you about them. And a more customized example, you might be some looking for something really, really specific. Like if you're a car manufacturer and you're looking to, uh, to market that car to young people that live in a city that have very active social lives that like other particular brands. You know, we can help you identify people who are just like that and give you the opportunity to study their behavior. Or you're a tech company that's trying to uh, move their game up in the market and you're trying to reach people who are you know, very tech savvy, talk about technology all the time, but have the personality type that once they find some technology that they like, they just can't help themselves from shouting from the rooftops how they've discovered the latest, greatest thing and kind of influencing and boring all their friends with uh, how cool their, their technology is. So it gives you the ability to identify those people. Then once you've identified that group, gives you a chance to sort of dig in and double click and see, understand some more about what's going on with those people, the kinds of things that they're talking about, perhaps a demographic breakdown of that group if that's interesting to you, uh, an understanding of the kind of media that they're really interested in and really influences them, a look at the TV shows that they really watch and talk about, uh, a list of the topics that they really do engage in and talk about with their friends, gives you a much more interesting look at people. You know, in the, in the sort of customized example, you might be looking for something really specific, like identifying the people that influence this group on a particular topic like um, environmental issues or technology issues or fashion or news or whatever else it happens to be but you can identify the key, inf the key people who have influence over your target group and maybe that's something that you can leverage. And then of course, you know, over time you can set up ongoing monitoring studies you know, so you can look at who is engaged on a particular topic on an ongoing basis, what other topics are sort of emerging over time that are of interest to that group and figure out if that's gonna be something that's gonna be useful to you, so for a brand health study or something like that, it's very easy to see how people are talking, the raw, unfiltered version of how people 
are talking about your brand and what they're really saying about it. And also understand what other brands they're engaged with at the same time. Are they starting to talk more about your competitor's brand than your brand? Are they starting to talk more about other issues altogether versus your brand? You, know, you can find out a lot about how engaged they really are and how they're really thinking about your brand. So the summary, um, sorry for the presentation being a bit short and rushed. We really could talk a whole lot more about it. But you know, there is new technology out there um, in social media that gives you the ability to tap into that aspect of personality as well as demographics, as well as the obvious interests and influences. And when you combine those three things together, it gives you a pretty good, nice, reliable view of what your customers might be like. So you know, think about it as a complement to your existing research methods. You, know, you might find something interesting and new. For a brand health study, it's very easy to set it up. For something like an insight study into a particular group, it's pretty easy to set up and really get a, a deeper understanding of what those people might be uh, all about. So I'll close with just a quick thanks and uh, a mention that we are actually sponsoring the lunch today, so please enjoy that. And we're going to have a little demonstration table at the back of the room here. So if you want to come and talk to us, we can give you some free access to run some data on a brand that you might be interested in or a topic that you might be interested in um, and have sort of personalized results. So uh, please come and talk to us if you're interested in that.